Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys for tuning in, for just supporting this channel, supporting me, encouraging me um, along the way. I know a lot of you have inquired why I haven't posted up um, any recent videos and um, just some certain things have come up within my family and our computer went down and um, just different circumstances that took place. But um, I'm back in action with Motivation Monday and as you can see, I am wearing my coat. It is super cold. It is rainy outside. It's cold. It's my favorite weather. And um, I just felt like, you know, God, like, I'm just gonna make a video. Like, let's just chit chat. You know what I mean? Let's just chit chat. Um, you know, a lot of you from my last um, inquiry on Instagram, um, some of you guys have inquired about um, my testimony and different things, just wanting to know my story. And look, I could sit here all day and be on the camera for an hour and share everything it is that, have, that has happened over a period of time in my life and, and where I'm at now and what's led me to the point where I'm at now and, and how I've grown in the things of God and, and just the things that I've went through too. Like, man, we all have a story. We all have a story to share. We've all been through different situations, good, bad, the ugly. Look, nobody lives a perfect life. Nobody... Um, whoever claims to be perfect, I mean, that's a lie from the bit of hell. You know what I mean? Like Jesus was the only one who was perfect in this life. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that my life has been rainbows and butterflies because it hasn't, you know, look, I'm a mom of two. I'm a wife. Um, I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. I'm a friend. I serve at my church. There's so many tiles that I wear. At the end of the day, I'm human. I still go through life, life's uh, uh, woes and cares. You know, there's still things that I battle with internally, still things that, that God is, is healing me from, from my past. And, um, you know, God is a God of restoration. God is a God of breakthrough. God is a God of forgiveness. He's, he's an, an all consuming fire, the Bible says. And, and, um, I'm not trying to sound all Christianese. What I'm trying to say is that there's a purpose for your life. You know, there's a purpose behind your story. And I thank God that he has given us a voice as believers. He has given us the authority to, to speak truth, to speak life, to give God the glory in everything it is that we have gone through. And that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, it's, it's kind of just a little... Um, a little reboot of, uh, not a reboot. What's the word? It's my testimony, but I don't want to just sit here and be like going over all my events, like a timeline. Like, like I said, we'll be here all day, but I want to get, give God the glory because, you know, I dealt a lot with depression as a, as a child, um, not knowing how to navigate that, not knowing how to channel that, not really knowing that I was going through it, like depression when I was a child because you don't know you, you're not mature and some some ch people are some children are you know what I mean they are mature but I wasn't I didn't understand what I was going through but now that I look back now that I'm older I realize the things and the events that I've gone through you know where the enemy got me even as a, as a young child so I dealt with depression I dealt with insecurity and I just want to emphasize that I was in a very loving home I had I still have both of my parents thank you Jesus um, I grew up with my sister now we have my brother we're 14 years apart my brother and I but he's like older but um, what I'm saying is that you know, I, I dealt with a lot of things in, in growing up and a lot of it was internalized. A lot of it wasn't expressed. And I think some of us can relate to that, right? So we grew up thinking like we're all good. But then when we, when it comes to real life situations, how we handle certain things, we realize like, okay, I am not healed from this. I still have a problem with, you know, X, Y, Z. And so in growing up in my adolescent years, going into middle school and high school, like I was so insecure. I was so insecure. Um, I, I do want to mention that growing up, I did get bullied a lot. I did get made fun of a lot. And so again, you internalize those things because you don't know how to deal with it. And if you express it, you're afraid somebody's not going to understand. Maybe they're going to have a lack of emotion, a lack, a lack of grace, a lack of understanding, a lack of connection and what you're feeling because it's not them. And so I internalized a lot growing up and I never got healed from it. I never know I never knew who God was too while I was growing up. I grew up in the Catholic faith, but um not disregarding anybody of the Catholic faith. I just speaking on behalf of my own experience, um, and being a um 
a Catholic when I was younger, like I never knew about the God of relationship. I only knew uh, a ritualistic tradition. I only knew quote unquote religion, you know, um, and never knew, never heard about the God of love, forgiveness and, and, and loving kindness and, and all these amazing things of, of who God is. Never heard of that. So, you know, again, you internalize things. You don't know how to have a relationship with God because you were never taught that. You were just taught to sit down, stand up to your confirmation, because if you don't, well, then you're not a real Catholic. You know what I mean? And so, again, not just regarding anybody of the Catholic faith, but um, so, you know, in my high school years is actually when I gave my life to Christ. And I think my, my aunt and my uncle who were just pillars in my life at that time. And I didn't even know that, but now I can say because they were planting seeds along the way, they were downloading, you know, uh, just spiritual knowledge and, and wisdom of just nuggets of like, God loves you. There's a purpose for you. You know, this is who God is and always referencing scripture, always showing me about the love of God. And, and they would ha host Bible studies at their home. And that's actually where I gave my life to the Lord. And so I was about 15, 16 years old. And, and so at that time I didn't have Christian friends. I didn't, um, I didn't have uh, uh, like a church that I was actually going to faithfully. I w definitely was not serving at a church, you know. So I didn't um, understand the, the concept of like, okay, now you gave your life to Christ. Like things don't happen overnight. Things don't happen overnight, right? Like it's a process. There's a process to life change. There's a process to healing. There's a process to restoration, right? God is a God of forgiveness. The Bible says that he will wash away our sins as far as the East is from the West and he'll remember it no more. It's just a matter of saying, Lord, I accept you into my life. Forgive me, forgive me of my sins. I confess you Lord and Savior. Like, and so we can talk about that in another video. But uh, my point is that you, you're not taught these things um, all the time as far as like, okay, what are the next steps? You know, again, I wasn't planning in a church, so I didn't have somebody to disciple me. I didn't have somebody to lead me. You know, it was kind of on my own. Yes, I had my aunt and my uncle, and, I, and I'm thankful for them, but I didn't have anybody my age to relate to me on things that I was going through at that time as a teen, you know? And so I started getting into relationships with people that we're not trying to edify my spiritual walk with God. And so, you know, I, I ventured off and started spiraling down into a, a very black hole, <laughs> so to speak. But I was in relationships and um, I started losing my value and my worth and who I was and everything it is that 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 God had called me to be. And, um, you know, gave myself away. I gave myself away and... Um, you know, everything it is that I said I wouldn't do, I did. You know, I, I'm never going to have sex before marriage. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to smoke weed and do, because those are all the things and still today that people, um, it, it's just a trending thing. It's a never ending trending thing. And so I always said I wasn't going to do those things before marriage. And, um, you know, I, I totally went against everything it is that I said that I, that I was going to do. And, you know, it made me become even more insecure. It made me become a very jealous person because the people that I was with were jealous. They were manipulative, um, verbally uh, abusive in the sense of controlling, controlling you, what you can and can't do, who you can and can't hang out with, making you feel guilty uh, for, you know, wanting to, you know, be with your family, making you feel guilty for, for um, insignificant things or significant things, I'm sorry, that that they felt were insignificant. And I'm not saying that to, to talk negatively about anybody from, from my past relationally, because I thank God for those experiences. I thank God that it has made me who I am today. I know my worth. I know who I am. I'm a woman of God in authority, under authority. I'm anointed. I have a purpose behind my life. And it's not to say that, that I'm better than anybody or anything because I'm not. God gets the glory. I, I boast only in the Lord. I, I'm, I'm speaking in humility here because God has done so much in my life. He has done so much, man. There's so many, so many dark moments that I have encountered, you know, dabbling with psychic tree, you know, um, that whole new age thing. And, and I didn't dabble into the new age, but I could have very well uh, uh, continued on that path. I mean, I went to psychics. I went to people who were into sorcery and, and, and witchcraft unknowingly, not knowing that all that is in relation to one thing. And the enemy wants you to be confused. See, the enemy is, is, is deceptive. He, he's a counterfeit to everything that God does. 
See, he wants to tell you your future. He wants to, uh, to, to tell you um, what you want to hear. But they're lies. They're lies. I remember going to psychics. I remember them telling me different things that would happen that would, quote unquote, come to pass. And I remember believing it. I remember thinking, wow, like, this is who I'm going to marry or oh, this or that. And like, you're so uh, naive and confused. I was so naive and confused. And, and uh, um, I just, man, I thank God for setting me free. But I opened up a lot of doors in, in, in playing with that stuff because that stuff is real. That stuff is demonic. And people downplay it. The world today downplays uh, psychic tree and sorcery and, and all these things. They, they make uh, um, play out of it, you know, and the enemy's real. You don't want to mess with the demonic realm because that stuff is real. And I've had a lot of demonic encounters along my way. And that unknowingly, like that had built my faith because if something so evil can be real and present, then God has to be real, Right. There has to be a God. There has to be a God. And so in a weird way, that was kind of feeding my faith. But um, I'm not proud of it. And, um, you know, I, I partied a lot. I drank a lot. I smoked weed. Um, I even dabbled with pornography. I'm not, um, I'm not the most proudest person to say that. You know, I don't say that out of like, wow, look at me. Like, no, it's kind of embarrassing. But again, God gets the glory. And, um, I just remember just this lustful spirit just being around me. I remember just, you know, enjoying what I was watching and, um, it, because it's spiritual, because people don't realize that there's a spirit of lust, there's a spirit of, 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 of fornication, of perversion. See, you don't understand that, right? Because there's a spiritual uh, uh, war going on around us, right? The Bible says we fight not against flesh and blood, but of the dark principalities and the dark forces of the, hem of the heavenly realms. A lot of people don't realize that, but it's real. It is so real. And um, I was just uh, fascinated by that. I was. It, it didn't last for a long time, but, but the, the spiritual side of it, um, was attached to me for some time because I came, became uh, very promiscuous. And again, just, um, uh, I wouldn't say that I was perverted, but I was doing perverted things in relationships, again, that were not edifying God. And um, it's hard for me to say this, <laughs> knowing that, you know, um, potentially my family members could watch this, but you know what? God gets the glory. Because look at me now. Yes, I'm. I'm. I. We sin every day. The Bible says we all fall, fall short of the glory glory of God every day. I'm not sitting here and saying that I'm perfect because I'm not. But I am a, a thousand times, a hundred times, a million times, uh, uh, better and different than I ever was. And I thank God because. You know, the Bible says to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you come to Christ, you grow in the things of God. You mature in your faith. And God gets the glory because I have a different perspective now. I have a different perspective about life and who I am and the purpose and, and, and what God has called me to do. And this is just a snippet. And me sharing, this is just a snippet of everything that I have encountered. And just all the dark moments and all the, the, the lies that, that people have spoken against me, the curses that people have spoken against me, the witchcraft that was spoken against me. Yes, I've experienced people coming against me with witchcraft and sorcery and lying and, 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 and saying cursive things to me and trying to, to quote unquote condemn my life. But God is greater. God is bigger. God was with me every step of the way. The Bible says that he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. He never forsook me. Even in those moments where I felt like, God, where are you? You know, I've encountered maybe one or two life and death experiences in my life. And um, man, God is real. God is real. The devil is real. And I share my testimony and in, in a bit of my testimony in hopes to encourage you that, hey, seek out your faith. Seek out your faith. God wants a relationship with you. God loves you. I'm not sitting here to preach to you. I'm sitting here to encourage you. Like, look, the devil is real. The Bible says that he's out to kill, steal, and destroy, seeking in whomever he may devour. The devil is on the prowl. The demonic realm, the demonic forces are on the prowl to kill, steal, and destroy everything it is that God has called you to do. 
This is not a time to be playing. This is not a time to be messing around. We're in the last days. We're living in the end times right now. If you don't believe in the Bible, man, a third of the prophecies have in the Bible have already come to pass. God is coming soon. The Bible says, what does a profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You can gain all the riches in the world, all the beauty in the world. And again, I'm not sitting here to tell you that, that I have it all together because I don't. But I know God loves me. I know that I'm walking in my purpose right now. I'm walking in my purpose. Man, God has delivered me from addiction, for, of lust, uh, of sexual promiscuity. He has, uh, he has delivered me from, uh, from drinking, from partying. Uh, he's delivered me from insecurity, from worry, from fear. Man, I even struggled. I, yes, I'm going to be bold to say I even struggled at one point of, of being sexually confused in my identity, thinking that I was attracted to girls. And thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, that we can share share our testimony, that we can be transparent, that we can be vulnerable and say, look what the Lord has done. Look what I have been delivered from. I say that only in the Lord, and this is not to judge anybody who may be struggling with, with confusion, but there was a point in my life, a small point in my life, even at a young age where the enemy tried to get me with, with confusion of my identity, who I was and who God created me to be in Jesus' name. I, I, I speak with passion because I get mad at the devil. I get mad, but God already won the victory. We already won the victory. We just have to be bold. We have to stay persistent in our faith. We have to keep fighting the good fight, the Bible says, because this world is going to pass away. It's going to pass away. It's not here forever. We are not here forever. The Bible says that uh, uh, we are here. We could be here today and gone tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's not guaranteed to anybody. And I'm not trying to sound morbid, but I'm just trying to tell you what God has done in my life and for you to get right with God. Get right. Today is the day of salvation. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, so yes, those are things that I dealt with along the way over, over a period of time. And, and, um, you know, people don't know your story. They can see, you know, the Bible says that man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. So you can look at me, you can, um, you can judge or you can have your opinions. You know, that's just, it's, it's just a natural human thing, right? We tend to just judge somebody from their appearance or what we think we know of them from social media or from hearsay through the grapevine. But at the end of the day, nobody knows your true struggles, right? This is why we need to be planted in a church. This is why we need to have other believers surrounding us and encouraging us. The Bible says that sh uh, iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens one another. And so I thank God for my godly friendships because I, and, and my husband. I thank God for my husband. He is a gift from heaven, even though there's moments where it's like, Lord, we are driving each other crazy or like, Lord, like whatever the circumstance may be in that moment. But I thank God for my husband. I thank God that he brought me a godly man. No, he's not perfect. And yes, we, we are continuing to grow in the things of God. We're continuing to grow as a couple in the Lord. And I just thank God that even in the midst of all my 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 sin, in the midst of all my my um, sexual promiscuity and, and making demonic proclamations of you know, I remember one time I was in a relationship and because I was sexually active, I remember saying, God, I don't want to be pregnant because I wasn't, I wasn't trying to stop that, so to speak. And you get what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I remember saying, Lord, I'd rather not be pregnant right now than to not have children in the future. What I was pretty much saying is that, Lord, I'd rather not have your blessings in the future because of my sin right now, because of what I'm choosing to do uh, 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 in, in selfishness and in pride and in, in, in arrogance and in, in really being naive, <laughs> you know what I mean? And even when I was in my sin, I knew God. I wish I could have said, Lord, I, I wish I would have never known you and, be, and, and living in sin, but I knew God and I fell away from God. But back to my point in saying that is now I'm married. And I have two beautiful baby boys, and I can't imagine my life without them. I can't. I thank you, God, for two blessed pregnancies, complication-free, 
And when I look back, those demonic proclamations that I made out of selfishness, God was still with me. He still had purpose. He still blessed me, right? Again, I think in our in our struggles and our, our darkest time, God observes the heart. He looks at the heart. People don't see the heart, right? I mean, when you talk to somebody, you know, out of the mouth the heart speaks, the Bible says. So you'll know, you'll know people by their fruits, right? Are they bearing good fruit or are they bearing bad fruit? But God looks at the heart. And I think along the way in my pain, in my turmoil, in my depression, in my insecurity, in me giving myself away and my worth, God never left me. He never left me. And I, I always felt the love of God. But because I opened so many doors uh, of sin, there was an eeriness. There was a demonic presence, and there was a lot of demon- demonic encounters that I that I had experienced along the way. But God is greater. The Bible says that demons tremble at the name of Jesus, that they have to flee at the name of Jesus. So now that I'm walking in my God-given calling, authority, the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in me, I walk in that authority boldly. The Jackie, uh, 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 10 years ago, five years ago, heck, even two years ago, is not the same Jackie because I'm continuing to grow in the things of God. And when you're reading the word of God, the Bible says that the word of God does not return void. So everything, the Bible says that the word of God is is sharper than than any two double-edged sword, sharper uh, than piercing through the the bone and marrow of the body. The word of God is powerful. It is so powerful. So my point in saying that is now that I've been growing in the things of God, serving God faithfully for now seven years, um, faithfully, because I knew God 10 years ago, but I fell away. But now serving God faithfully for seven years, man, my, my, my eyes have been open. My deaf ears have been open. The Bible says, Lord, give us eyes to see and ears to hear what your spirit is saying. So now when I'm walking, I'm walking in discernment. I'm walking in, okay, Lord, what is it that you want me to do today? What is your spirit saying? What is your spirit speaking? My talk is different now. My talk is different now. Yes, I have my human moments and there's things that I still struggle with from time to time, but God is with me. God is with me and now I can handle it differently because I've surrendered, surrendered, it, surrendered it all to God. I've given it to God. And there's moments where it's hard to give certain situations to God because the Bible says that we are to walk in forgiveness daily. Daily we walk in forgiveness to love our enemies. And man, there's been some certain, some really hard and tough situations that have happened as, as of recent that have really struggled with my, my, my not my faith, but just in, in the, the lines of forgiveness that's attached to your faith. It's been really hard walking in forgiveness. It's been super hard, but God is good. If God can forgive us, if if God can die on the cross for our sin, right? Knowing he died 2000 years ago, but he's, he lives and, and reigns forevermore. But if he could die on the cross two years ago, 2000 years ago, knowing the sin that we were going to commit today and tomorrow and the next day, then why can't we forgive? The, God, God's not going to hear our prayers if we don't forgive. He's not going to forgive us if we don't forgive. Even as Christians, you know, if, if God takes us home today and we haven't forgiven our brother or sister, I can't, I'm not the judge to say whether we're going to go to hell or heaven. I don't know. I only know what the Bible says. The Bible is truth. It is the infallible God breathed inspired word of God. I believe what the Bible says. And I believe that there's grace along the way. And God graces us in in our unforgiveness. He graces us in in our sin. And so I share all that to say is to encourage you to seek out your faith. I encourage you to seek out God, not what man says, not man's theology, not what who, who man says that God is, because there's a very tainted view of who God is in today's society. And you know what the Bible says to not put our trust in man, 
but to put our trust in God because man will let us down. There's pastors, there's preachers, there's evangelists, and even world, even worldwide evangelists and preachers who are very well known, who have let us down, who have let the body of Christ, who have let the church down, who have let people down. So, so people have this tainted view of who God is because of people's sin. See, God is a just God. The Bible says that he reigns on the just and the unjust, right? He's a merciful God. He has to discipline uh, 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 sin, those who are in sin, right? God's not going to expose, but he is going to bring to light truth to a situation, okay? God can't go against his word. So God is a just God and he's a forgiving God. And so I say that all to say is that Maybe you've been hurt in a church. Maybe you've been hurt by somebody on the street holding up a sign condemning you to hell. See, look, God didn't do that. God was a God is a God of love, of peace, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Those are the attributes, the characteristics of God. Jesus, when he was here on earth, he walked in love. He walked in forgiveness, constantly preaching to the multitudes, to his own disciples, to walk in love and forgiveness, to love our enemies, to turn the other cheek if you've been hit on one cheek. Do you know what I mean? God is a God of love, and, and people have, have tainted that that uh, that view of, of, of who God really is. So I encourage you to seek out your faith. To seek it, to seek the word of God, to read the Bible. Read the Bible. The truth is there. The truth is there. God will speak to you. God will meet you with where you're at. You don't have to come to him already, you know, um, uh, bandaged up from your wounds. Come to him as you are. Come to him in your sin. Come to him in your sin. God loves us. God loves us. God loves you. I know I shared a little bit of my testimony and maybe I'll share in another video uh, part two, more details of, of, of things that I've gone through, but God gets the glory through it all. He delivered me from so much and, and is still helping me grow in certain areas of my life. And he's restored relationships. He's, he's brought healing, internal healing in my heart. He's, um, I'm no longer confused about who I am, my identity. I know who I am in God. What the enemy meant for harm, God turned around for his glory, for the saving of many lives, for the saving of many lives. Share your story. Share your testimony. There's healing behind it. There's purpose behind it. There's breakthrough behind it. There's salvation behind it your story. People need to hear your story. Hey, look, guys, I pray that you were blessed by this video. I'm coming back at you with Motivation Monday, and I can't wait to uh, just continue to share on the goodness of God and all that he's going to continue to do through this channel and those who are going to be blessed by it. And I give God all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. I'm going to close out in prayer. Why don't you uh, join me? So Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, uh, for all for all that it is that, that that you are doing in our lives. I thank you, Lord, that that you have brought a, a testimony out of the test. You've brought a beautiful message out of uh, out of the mess, God, that there's purpose behind our pain, Lord. And I thank you, God, for all that you're gonna continue to do. I thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness, for your breakthrough, for your restoration, for your mercy, God. And I pray for those who are struggling with their faith, who are struggling with their identity, who are struggling in sin and addiction, whatever the circumstance may be, I pray, Lord, that you would meet them where they are at right now, that you would meet them in their pain, God, that you would meet them in their addiction, God, that you would bring peace and comfort and knowing that you love them, that you've created them for a purpose, God. And so we thank you, Holy Spirit, for, for your presence. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for, for your, uh, for your uh, counsel and just for, um, just for meeting us where we're at, God. So we thank you for, for um, your love. And we thank you, God, for today. And we ask you, Lord, that you would grant us another day of life and breath. And um, and we just thank you, Lord. So I love you, God. And, and um, bless these people. Bless this channel. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Love you guys. I'll see you soon. Motivation Monday. God bless.